Hello, hope you had a nice Christmas, Kwanzaa, uh, Hanukkah, and if you don't celebrate anything like that, I hope you're just having a nice day anyway. Um, this is a somewhat on the spur of the moment video, um, although I have thrown a few things on. My Doctor Who scarfs to uh, thank two people, uh, Simon for your support, being a massive Tom Baker fan, Tom Baker fan, with the jelly babies, um, and Helen for, for getting me this for my Christmas, it's nice and warm. Um, as indeed is my red jumper, but I've got that myself, so no thanks to any of you who. And my Jethro uh, Talbini just appealed to the younger demographic. Um, last night I watched the new version of what I regard as one of the finest family films, and certainly the finest fantasy cult films. Uh, family cult films, which is fantasy um, ever made, which is The Amazing Mr. Blundum. Um, it came out originally in 1972 and was an adaptation of The Ghosts by Antonia Barber. Um, what I like about this new version is it credits both. It says this is an adaptation, a remake of the film, The Amazing Mr. Blunden, which was an adaptation of the novel The Ghosts by Antonia Barber. So it credits both the film and the novel as being um, sources, which which I like, you don't get that very much. Um, so I thought I'd make a quick kind of appraisal um, and also show you the original in case you haven't uh, partaken because although this particular version is, is out of print, you can still get a standard edition and Sky and Now TV and whatnot are, sh are showing the new version, it's on, it's on there now because it debuted the other night. The story of the amazing Mr. Blunden. Um, the 1972 version is set in 1918, and the 2021 version is set in 2021. <laughs> nice and easy to remember that. Um, so, both concern a destitute family who can't afford much at all. And they're offered the opportunity by an old eccentric man called Mr. Blunden, who turns up out of the blue at their door, an old bearded man. And he says, come to my offices tomorrow, he's a lawyer, come to my offices tomorrow and um, I have an opportunity to talk to you about him. Um, and it turns out that is being the caretaker, the mother and the children, being the caretakers of an old house, a run-down old house, and living in the small cottage next to it. They don't need to do anything, they don't need to tidy it, they just need to look after it. Money for old rope, you'd think, and they do think. However, they're so destitute that they offer of anything rent free, plus the country air, why not? They go for it. So, the original, uh, the amazing Mr. Blunden, stars the wonderful Lawrence Naismith as Mr. Blunden, um, but it also has uh, perhaps even more wonderful um, Diana Dors uh, under a lots of makeup. Um, and what is he? Is he on the cover? No, he isn't, but we'll, we'll find a picture of him, don't worry. Um, and Madeline Smith, of course, from, from plenty of great uh, horror films. Um, and who plays? <laughs> Sorry, this isn't terribly interesting for you to watch. It's Graham Crowden was was Arnold Clutterbuck, um, and in the new one he's played by uh, Sam Samuel Barnett. Is that his name from um, uh, Big Finish's Cicero, which I quite like seeing that. Um, James Villiers is also in this version, um, who's again a cult uh, icon and been on plenty of great television over the years. Let's see if there's a picture of, there must be a picture of James Villiers. But look at, look at that and the door is there. I mean, this woman just 10 years earlier was a sex symbol. She had no problems with making herself out to be this disgusting, horrible, yeah. And there's the lovely Madeline Smith. No pictures of James Villiers. Oh, there's, there's James Villiers, of course, there he is. Yeah, very charming, James Villiers. So, they moved to the country, 
um, moving out to the country to Cork County and they are told you know this place is a little bit haunted you know it's an old country house so they all are kind of comes with the haven't you read the woman in black um but they soon come to realize it's not haunted in the sense that you and i would think of because we live in the age of jump scares and and um, you know these awful horror movies like insidious and all this paranormal activity crap um these ghosts need help they need help to move on or they need help to change something and in this instance two children died in that house um, 100 years earlier or 200 years earlier depending on whether you're talking about the 70s version or the modern version um, and they find a way a potion this sounds like I'm on shrooms but this is true they find a potion that allows them to travel forward to the future so they're not dead they, they are alive they time travel to ask for help because they know they are going to die because they've already seen their graves by time traveling doesn't that sound like the most Doctor Who like story ever but this was 1972 and Stephen Moffat was still in shorts um, Doctor Who wasn't doing these kind of timey wimey stories back then um, so they know they're going to die they just don't know how um, and they know Diana Doors is going to cause it or rather the character I should say not Diana Doors <laughs> um, so they keep asking for help but everyone runs away because they think they are malevolent ghosts but these two children um, who have moved from the city stay and want to help and Mr Blunden is like let's use something contemporary he's the Nick Fury of this story he wants to bring modern children and the dead ghost ghost children together through bringing the modern children back in time using the same potion to change what happened and save the lives of those kids there you go so it's basically the avengers with a bunch of kids and this is nick fury and time travel. In fact, Endgame had time travel, so there you go. So basically, Avengers Endgame, rip off of Mr. Blunden. Um, I won't go into too many more details about the plot itself because it's so magical and whimsical that I think you should, um, you should just jump in. Um, but I would like to say a few things about each. Um, first of all, this, this edition. This is the long out of print um, second sight um, Blu-ray which this is a part of um, so this is your big booklet um, that I've, sh I've already shown you a couple of pictures from um, and there's a there's a poster to that yeah so there's there's a poster to you know maybe you saw that in the lobby um, um, and it's 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 a lovely booklet, it's got plenty of information. Uh, your traditional poster, which is not two sided, it's just the cover, so I won't bother opening it up again. Although, you do get another shot of uh, Diana looking lovely there. Um, your desk itself, and that lovely uh, second sided black case, which I think is a double sided desk, yes, uh, the case sleeve. Yeah, there you go. Uh, so, there's another bit of artwork. Um, from the, the show. in fact I'll flip that because this sounds silly but whenever you get one piece of artwork on, on a slip box like a case and an alternate artwork on the inside I always change it even if I don't like the other artwork because at least this way you get two different bits of artwork so there we go changed so this was all worthwhile um, and then there's your hardback box and yeah nothing in the back but um, although this is a print the blu-ray itself so the actual blu-ray you can still get I'll, if I remember I'll put a link down um, to second site I, I'm not an Amazon affiliate or anything so I'm not going to
do that so I'll, I'll direct you to second set um, the, the original you know if, if you've seen uh, the Railway Children, which I certainly hope you have, because it is such a classic. But it ends with the whole cast on the railway line, with the locomotive behind them, and they're all saying goodbye while waving the whole cast at once. And without spoiling the ending of Mr. London at all, I won't say what happens, how it happens, or anything. But the whole cast, dead or alive. But again, I'm not going to say who, what, when, why, or what. One by one, as their credit appears, all come on screen and say goodbye in the style of the character. So they're still in character, but saying goodbye, breaking the fourth wall. So um, Madeline Smith says um, goodbye as her character, uh, Bella. Um, Graham Crowden says it's Clutterbuck. Lawrence Naismith does it as Blunden. Um, and that must have just been something that Lionel Jeffries liked to do because he did it in The Railway Children and, and here he does it even more because he does it individually he doesn't just do it as a group shot, he has them all individually, come on so um, horrible old Diana Doris goes goodbye and whereas um, you know the kids are goodbye, goodbye you know, so it's magical, it's a whimsical wonderful way uh, to end the film, and I wish I wish we had filmmaking like that these days, um, instead of the cynicism, which even family films have. Can you imagine a Marvel film ending with that, where it showed you all the characters in the film, even the ones that died in the film, just looking at the camera and going, goodbye, goodbye, hope you have a good time. I mean, some of them literally had things like that. Hope you enjoyed the film. Can you imagine a Marvel film ending like that? Breaking the fourth wall, just to be nice. Lionel Jeffries, I love you to bits. I lament your death. I think you were a wonderful actor, a fantastic director, and and an inspiration because you made some magnificent films. Talking about wonderful, wonderful people, uh, let's go into the new version, 2021. Now, when I first heard they were doing a new version of uh, the Amazing Mr. Blunden. I thought, um, stop right there, you also get the novel, I forgot to mention, in the deluxe version, you also get the ghosts, um, the actual original novel, for those of you that like to watch movies by reading words with your eyes, um, they've made new artwork for it, it was long out of print um, and going for good money, but um, if you can get this edition I really recommend it because it's so slight, and you get a bloody book. Um, so the new version, written and directed by uh, Mark Gatiss, so until I'd heard that that was the case, I was worried. Because I do not generally like these new versions of things that, 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 that tend to get made. I find that they, they add on sensibilities, and I'm, I, I don't mean wokeness, I don't mean anything like that, I'm perfectly okay with that. Um, but they they write it as a two thousand and say twenty one writer would write it rather than you know the spirit of the original sometimes lost. Um, you know you can you can as this does you can find ways of making it incredibly contemporary while losing none of the spirit. Um, and that's what I'm hoping for the Railway Children too this year as well. Um, so Mark Gatiss was announced as being the, the mastermind behind it and I'm a big fan of his MR James adaptations every year he just did uh, uh, the Mitsutino uh, with uh, Rory Kinnear who he did the, funnily enough he did the Mitsutino with Rory Kinnear who he co-starred with in a remake of First Men in the Moon and the film of First Men in the Moon starred Lionel Jeffries who directed the amazing Mr. Blunden. So there you go. There's a, I can always put these things together. Um, so knowing that Mark Gattis, who adores this period of, of cinema and television and knows it inside out, was behind it, all of a sudden I had no concerns. Um, because I, I've loved his M.R. James adaptations, which which follow on very, very uh, well from from the 70s MR James and, and Christmas Ghost Story um, 
stories um, a good box set which is available from the, the BFI um, but Mark um, decided to, to, to set it in 2021 as I said which I thought was quite a bold choice because it is such a an old-fashioned kind of story but then when you get into the crux of it you realize it isn't it isn't that different at all because it's still children out of time looking for help ghost children um, and they mention that they've tried a number of times and people keep running away because they're scared so maybe in this reality um, these children did run away and they had to come to 2021 to get help um, the two young children um, who they, they meet in 2021 um, are obviously different. They talk the 2021 kids, not 1918 kids. So they they are much more contemporary speaking. Um, the mother chastises them for using the iPhone at the table, um, but you know it's the same basic story. They're still just a skint family who've just lost their dad. Uh, or the kids have lost their dad. The mum, played by Vinette Robinson. Um, who uh, has played many wonderful parts but to me she'll be Rosa Parks from from Doctor Who forever now um, the the family uh, from 2021 aren't that different because their hearts are the same and they want to help and that's all the children from 200 years ago need is help but there are some nice additions that I thought were kind of funny uh, that Mark thought to put them in there. So in the original, um, th I mentioned that they time travel using a magic potion. Um, in the original, they have to remember what these ingredients are. So it's St John's Wood, but you know, they have to try and remember it. In this, the boy says, no, it's okay, I'll just take a picture with my phone. <laughs> he just snaps it from from the old book in the library. Um, wonderful, absolutely wonderful. So there's the small additions like that. Um, it starts with them, uh, the the two kids in London, just playing a game of guessing what strangers are doing that day, and uh, one of them guesses that um, this guy's waiting on his girlfriend for first date only to, to realise that um, the next guy that walks up is actually his boyfriend and <laughs> they kiss. <laughs> Again, I hope that annoyed just the right people, as indeed I know the casting of the two kids did because um, the two kids, and uh, as I mentioned, Vinette, Vinette Robinson is the mother, the two, the two kids are black and the top, the top, the only review I could find of this was, was on this um, newspaper, which is why I um, saw this comment. The top comment on the Telegraph uh, says, um, what was the exact phrase again? Ethnics, e ethnics jumping in where they're not wanted, something like that. So it was something like that. So the kids being black was a problem for some people. Two ghosts from 200 years ago need help. Apparently that their skin colour uh, of who helps them matters. By the way, I've read this, their skin colour is not mentioned. So whoever that was on the, the Tory graph. Um, oh, oh, and one thing, again, I'm still not going to mention the ending of the film or the, the I guess it's a film even though it was on TV um, but w one thing I was desperate for and I will say this, I will spoil this much and it's, again it's not to do with the plot at all Mark clearly loves the same things about the film as I do because he kept the goodbyes, he kept that, that's there um, the character of Mr. Blunden in the original was played by Lawrence Naismith um, and he is in the two time zones so he is also a ghost because he's bringing the children together 
he's also somewhat responsible for what happened to the children. I don't want to say any more than that because it's but Lawrence Naismith was able to play both parts perfectly. The kindly ghost of Mr. Blunden and also the other Mr. Blunden. Very, very differently, but both very, very, uh, well, wonderfully, just to slaughter that sentence, put out his misery. Um, in the new version, Simon Callow plays Mr. Blunden. Now, if you can think of better casting than replacing Lawrence Naismith with Simon Callow, then you should be Andy Pryor and cast for all the BBC shows, because, wow, perfect casting. Um... Simon Callow was in um, Marvel's Hawkeye recently and uh, was killed after, and again this isn't a spoiler because it's the first episode, killed in, in one scene. What a waste of Simon Callow. I hope he got paid plenty. Um, however this, Mark Gatiss knows that you as your Simon Callow. Um, who again <laughs> will always be. Uh, Charles Dickens and Doctor Who to me, <laughs> um, uh, but also the writer of three great books about Orson Welles. Um, the overriding um, notion in the film is is not just um, ghosts, time travel, that kind of thing, but how cool is that as an idea? Time travel and ghosts. <laughs> They should have just called it that, Time Travelling Ghosts. That would sell in 2021. But it's just so contemporary because it's got an idea about kindness, for kindness's sake. These these modern kids, regardless of which version you're watching, the contemporary kids, to put it that way, don't need to help because the ghost kids are dead already. They don't need to do anything. But it never once crosses their mind. They don't once think, it's not our problem, we can see their grave, they're already dead. They know they can make a difference if there's even a slight chance they're going to take him. And there is a scene involving a staircase and Mr. Blunden, which in, in, in this version makes me cry. And damn you Mark Gatiss, you made me cry too because... There is no greater staircase scene. You can talk about your Odessa steps in the battleship Potemkin. You can have um, uh, Gloria Swanson coming down the stairs in Sunset Boulevard. You can have um, Bette Davis with her um, strap in. It's going to be a bumpy night. None of those staircase scenes can compare to, to what we get in both versions of The Amazing Mr. Blunden. So I recommend that you if you have access, watch the Sky version um, on Now TV or Sky or however you can watch it. And fuck it, download it illegally if you have to because it's that good. I shouldn't say that, should I? Um, but also get the uh, the second sight Blu-ray. Again, the big fancy one is out of print, but you can still get the actual movie itself, which is it's got loads of special features, including a commentary with. Um, the kids and Madeline Smith. Um, it's got um, another interview with Madeline Smith. Mark Gatiss. Look at that. Mark Gatiss on The Amazing Mr. Blunden, a new interview. So there you go. Do you think he's a fan? He's on this. And then two years later, he makes a remake. Wow. So, I, I, I don't think this will be a popular video, I mean, my Neil Young one has, you know, 900 odd views, Skyfall, uh, Skyfall, No Time to Die, 300 odd, um, Doctor Who's 110, I bet you this doesn't even crack 25, because <laughs> people don't know what the amazing Mr. Blunden is, really, even with this new version, but this, to me, should not have been buried on Sky. Um, this should have been BBC's evening viewing to as many people as possible. Instead of come dancing, Mrs. Bloody Brown doing Dick Emery jokes from 50 years ago that weren't funny then. Um, and uh, Michael McIntyre's Roadshow. I mean, the same crap every year when they could commission something like this to be made. 
uh, for a whole new generation. You know, I don't think it's quaint. I don't think it's outdated. I don't think it's old fashioned. This new version would resonate with kids if they saw it. But if the BBC won't make it, how are the kids going to see it? Yeah, a lot of people have got Sky. But, you know, they'll still check the main channels, won't they? So, you know, these things do get lost. And it's a damn shame. And I think this deserves a bigger audience. Both versions deserve a bigger audience. Because to me, if you like... Um, if you like the women in black, if you like the turn of the screw, those kind of things, even though this is family viewing, it's, it's essential, it means it's a you, you'll like this, regardless of whether it's, you know, good jump scares, or, or, or is, it an, oh, is, it, is it gory? No. But it's, it's frightening a bit, it's, it's genuinely frightening, you, because you care for the characters, and you care for 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 what happens to both sets of children and you want Diana Doors to get her comeuppance and you want to find out how does Mr Blunden fit in the all this oh, it's just been a, a, a 26 minute waffle about, about the two versions and trying to explain Mr Blunden even with spoilers is hard never mind without his spoilers because again time travel and ghosts is about as much as you can do it Jethro Talhat, watch out. Um, I'll let you go, um, but yeah, I bet, you tw I bet you 25 people don't even bother uh, watching this because it's just it's Mr. Blunden, who knows what Mr. Blunden is. Hopefully some more do, now that Second Sight have taken an interest, and now that Sky have made a version. I should also say um, that Diana Doors part that I keep referring to is wonderful played by Tams and Greg, um, in the in the new uh, version, she, she's fantastic in it. She's she's just as hideous as Diane Doors was, um, and Tamsin will always be that character from the Long Game and Doctor Who to me. No, actually, Tamsin Red to me will always be uh, what's her name from Black Books. But uh, but regardless, uh, so, so if you did watch, if you're one of the, the unlucky few put up with my rambles. Hopefully you at least Simon and Helen or you know, you came for the scarf. I mean it stayed for the conversation. Um if you have watched then thank you very much. Um and again check out Mr Blunden regardless of whether it's the nineteen seventy two version or it's the two thousand twenty one version. I think you'll get a lot out of it. Uh, however old you are, if you're five or fifty or 60 or 70, you know, you get the point, that was a, a bit of alliteration there. So, in the spirit of, of Lionel Jeffries, who even looks a bit like uh, Lawrence Naismith there, Lionel Jeffries could have been Blunden himself if he wasn't directing it, but in the spirit of Lionel Jeffries, I'll just leave you with, goodbye, thanks very much for watching, hope to see you again sometime soon.